Hello again everyone and welcome to episode 3 of the Instrument Panel Lua app series and in this one I'm going to look at a couple of the special things you need to do with a turbine panel. The first of those is clearly look at the RPM indicator. It's divided by a thousand. So for example on this model it goes up to 120 because the engine revs go up to 120,000. So, of course, if we just pass that raw data of 120,000 uh, to the dial, it would, well, basically, the, half a second after the starter motor kicked in, you'd have exceeded 120 RPM. So, we'll show you how to just divide the RPM by 1,000 to make it fit the dial. And the other one uh, is that text box at the bottom right of the panel, currently saying no index. Now, this is a very clever thing uh, that Dave's put in called a sequenced text box. And basically the telemetry simply passes a number to it. And the app converts that number to meaningful text. Now, in this case, what Dave has done is create a table of the Zikoi ECU telemetry uh, status codes into normal text. So if you've got one of the fairly recent Zikoi ECUs with their telemetry adapter, and if you have a look in sensors and logging, and that one of the items there is the ECU status code, you can use this box. If, like me, you've got a bit of an older uh, ECU, I think, according to Gaspar, more than about two or three years old, the ECU will not pass that status code along with the telemetry. It, you think it does because if you look in the Jetty Box emulator, uh, when it's emulating the ground data terminal, the status has come up, but it's not passing the code number in the EX telemetry. So have a look in sensors and logging. If you've got a plain number there coming up as a status code, you can use this box and it will convert it to the relevant piece of text, like running, um, starting up, ramping, whatever. Now, the only reason Dave's done this for Zikoi is that that's the type of uh, ECU that he has. He can create the tables for other brands of ECUs if some of you are kind enough to give us the data, you know, what code maps to what text, and Dave would be able to write them for those, so you could have it for those ones as well. So I'm going to show you very briefly now how you set up the RPM, how you set up that sequence text box. Rather than running an engine, and anyway, I don't have an ECU that would give me the status codes. So I'm using the little uh, sensor emulator from RC-Thoughts. And uh, its limitations are that it'll only go up to say 10,000 for 10,000 RPM, but you'll see it working, get the idea. I'll also show you uh, a nice thing that you can do to switch panels. So let's go into Applications, into the Instrument Panel. You can see I've selected, in this case, Turbine. There are other Turbine panels with different names, and they will not have the sequence text box. And I've also got the uh, Central Box dial on there. If we have a look in Settings, you can see I've chosen a switch to rotate panels, in this case, SG. And if we now look at what I can do, so I can now ping the switch and change panels. Okay, you could, if you wish, set it instead of that switch to be your turbine on-off switch or the trim you use to bring your turbine up. Okay, back into our menus. And uh, we'll need to define Lua variables, one for the RPM and one for the ECU status codes. So we'll come down here, Lua variables. As you can see, I've set S1 as the uh, simulated sensor one, and S2 is the simulated sensor two. So they're set up and ready to go. Uh, but in your case, let's say S1 in this particular instance would be the engine RPM and S2 would be the ECU status codes. Now we can go to our inputs. 
we can go to uh, the RPM first of all. So the input source is going to be Lua. And uh, which one was it? It was S1. So we need to tell it to use S1. That's its Lua value. And if I rotate the knob on the emulator sensor, we should see it moving up. There we go. Come back to it. Now, you can either, uh, in that edit Lua, say divide it by 1000, and that would do the job, or you can use a function extension here, divide by 1000, the value. There we go. Say OK. Let's have a little look at it. And... Um, My mistake, I should have used S2. Probably cause it to crash now. Uh, inputs, the RPM, Lua, should have been S2. So we can get it up to about 10,000. Yep. Okay. So imagine the engine is now running. I'm going to turn the RPM up to 10,000. So it will not overload a dial that only goes up to 120. If we watch this, there we go. This is in the thousands, so 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that's as far as my sensor emulator goes. So you can see that has done the job of taking the huge RPM from the engine and converting it down to those numbers. OK, now let's have a look at the sequenced text box. And it is the turbine status. So again, the input's going to be Lua. This was coming from S1, which I'd assigned to uh, the sensor emulator one. So if I turn its value, it should go up from zero to 100 maximum. There we are. Um, obviously, your Zikoi ECU doesn't go anywhere near 100. I think it'll go up to about 20 or 30. Say OK to that turbine status and now this is where we tell it to use the Zikoi telemetry text function so this is the the mapping table that Dave has created and as I say if you have a different brand and you can supply the, the codes to Dave he'll write one for your brand and that's it I say okay to that and now as you can see it's going to um read out the number. So obviously zero corresponds to high temp. I'll start turning the knob very gently and you'll see it scroll through the different names for all the different codes so that as your turbine's starting up, cooling down, failing, whatever, you can actually read off there what it's doing and it will give you that live. Okay, so there's a little run through how to use Lua function extensions and how to use the sequenced text box. I uh, hope you have great fun with all of this, folks.